Now here's a surprisingly interesting topic, uh, contrary to what you may think when you initially read that video title, locomotive numbering. To give you an idea, in a modern day system, it's all logical. So we're standing next to James Nightall GC. It's a class 47. Now the 47s themselves were split down into different subcategories. So this was in the four subcategory, but there were more than hundred made. So it did spill over. And this is why we have 47579. That's the modern day system. However, go back a hundred or so years pre-grouping and when you had lots of companies who all have their own systems and then through time they'd have to be merged and amalgamated and all eventually be singing from the same hymn sheet and inevitably this would end up with lots of copies contradiction confusions and would be all the ingredients you need for a really good episode When we look at the companies that would form Southern Railway, so the London and South Western, South Eastern and Chatham, London, Brighton and South Coast, they all had their own numbering strategies. So let's take 506RS15, designed by Robert Urey. Now, logically, you'd think for a new class of locomotive, you'd start at a round number, say 500, and work your way up. Well, no. The London and South Western's process essentially related to when the locomotive rolled off the production line. So 506 were built in a batch that started from 496 to 515. And then the next batch of locomotives took over from there. And then when Richard Mansell designed his S15s later on, it started from 823 and worked its way up. So a little bit confusing. Now, if you're already a bit annoyed with this practice, prepare to take it one step further. With this, the Bluebird Railways 01, built as an O-Class in 1896 and then rebuilt into its current form in 1908. Its number is 65. Now, you may think that's a very old engine. It's understandable it's got a low number. It's just the order that came off the production line. Well, no. See, the SEC had a very interesting numbering system. Let me show you. This one is number 65. The one built after this one was 64. The one built before was 248, then 123, 109, and 3. Yes, very much a law unto himself, and for someone like me who likes everything in order, it's very annoying indeed. Now, I shall admit, I did find myself down a little bit of a rabbit hole with this one, because I wanted to try and work out if there's any sort of pattern, some sort of sequence, some reason that they would have done this, and I did make an observation. Understandably, in the early days of the South Eastern Railway, not everything was made in house, probably because the resources weren't there. So a number of locomotives were made through external companies. So Nielsen, Sharp Stewart, Bayer Peacock, and alongside with the South Eastern's main works at Ashford, which would then be transferred over to the South Eastern Chatham Railway when they merged. Nearly all of the companies actually followed a somewhat logical sequencing, same thing like the London South Western. It was when the locomotive rolled off the production line. All except one. The main works at Ashford, they were the ones who did this sort of weird kamikaze numbering system of when a locomotive was scrapped, that loco number would be available to go onto the next engine. I genuinely have no idea why they've done this. I've looked around, can't find anything at all. So if anyone watching does know the reason for this, please do comment below. Now, aside from just trying to work out where each locomotive fitted within each company, inevitably there would be um, repetitions of the same locomotive number across the region. Not an issue now, because they're different companies. So for example, we know 506, built by London South Western, that's an S15, but on the South Eastern Chatham Railway, that's an E1, and the London Brighton South Coast, it's an E4. Again, no big deal. Until 1923, when Southern Railway is formed and suddenly all three companies are amalgamated together. Why is this an issue? Well, say we needed a boiler for 506 and S15, and then one for an E4 turns up because there's a bit of an administrative nightmare and it's lost in translation. Big problem. So we need to somehow make these locomotives unique. Now, what you could do is completely renumber the whole of a new Southern Railway class or something a bit easier. Just add a letter prefix to denote each of the main works for each region. So the London South Western, they were based in Eastleigh, so they had an E added. South Eastern Chatham, Ashford were the main works. And the London Brighton South Coast were based in Brighton. Excellent. And then um, in 1930, Southern Railway changed it a little bit to make it purely numerical. So 506 sort of became 0506. The South Eastern Chatham lot became 1506 and the LBSC became 2506. Problem solved. 
Until BR comes along in 1948 and suddenly we have the same problem all over again, this time on a national scale. So what do you do? Well, you sort of just do the same thing again. Each region were allocated a specific number. So Southern allocated a three. So the London, London Southwestern Railway S15 class, the 506 we know became 30506. South Eastern and Chatham became 31 and the LBSC became 32506. Nice and easy. Now this problem wasn't unique to Southern Railway. It was the same across pretty much the whole network. So the upshot was LMS would have a number four on the front of their locomotives, XLNER would be a number six and GWR would stay exactly the same. You see, GWR locomotives are unique in many ways, including the way they display the locomotive number, where other companies would paint the numbers on the side of a cab, GWR, as you can see, would cast them in brass or iron, an extra element of pizzazz and showmanship. So that meant when you wanted to renumber it, you'd have to take that plaque down, melt it down and recast it. And then you have to do it for the whole fleet, which understandably is incredibly expensive. So GWR were allowed to stay the same. Excellent, so all the locomotives now had a new number and the BR actually took a leaf out of the LMS book by adding the number plate and shed plate onto the smoke box door of the locomotives. Now, during all of this renumbering, there was one class which had to go through uh, quite a, a renumbering in itself, and that was these, the Bullied's. You see, Bullied used what's called an alphanumeric numbering system, and to be fair, credit where credit's due, it was quite intuitive. So, Manston's here's number was actually 21C170. Um, let me break that down for you. For two means, there are two axles in front of the driving axles on that leading bogey. The one means there's one axle on the rear axle, the trailing axle, just below the cab. C means there are three driving axles, and the 170 is Manston. That is its unique loco ID. Now, you may be wondering at this point, quite rightly so, why it's 170 at the end, not 70. Remember, this was the 70th of the class built. Well, that's because this numbering system was also used on the merchant navies, and they were being numbered first. So the merchant navy numbers worked exactly the same. So Canadian Pacific, for example, was 21C5. Two at the front, one at the rear, three driving axles, five, it's the fifth locomotive built. So they had to do some sort of numerical differentiating to separate the two classes. So Canadian Pacific and the merchant navies, they started from zero to 20, when the last batch of 10 were built, they were in the BR numbering system, which again, we'll get on to shortly. So the Light Pacifics, they started from 100 and worked their way up. All of this was massively simplified by BR. So they brought all the bullied classes into the new numbering strategy. So it would be a three for Southern, a four would be for Light Pacific. So Manston is a Light Pacific, whether it's Battle of Britain or West Country. And 70 is Manston itself. The Merchant Navies became three, five. So Canadian Pacific became Three for Southern, five for Merchant Navy, and 005 was Canpac. Now, as I mentioned, this numbering and admin nightmare was not restricted to the Southern Railway. It happened all over the place. Let's take one famous example, Flying Scotsman. She got through quite a few numbers in her past, being built as 1472 when she was built for the Great Northern Railway. That was then renumbered to the more famous 4472, which quite a few people know her as. Then when Edward Thompson succeeded Sir Nigel Gresley as Chief Mechanical Engineer, he changed it to 502 and then 103. And then when BR came along, the LNER number was 60,000, so it's 60103. So it does beg the question, a bit like liveries, what is the correct number that a locomotive should carry? I don't know for sure, and I'm going to leave that up to you. So for now, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you to our friends at Didcot Railway Centre and the Bluebell Railway, and we'll see you next time. And then it was 103, and then 3. 123, 109, 3, wasn't it? You were doing so well. You did almost on the money. I, I, I should probably say at this point, um, you can definitely tell the difference in handwriting. That's because Rich wrote all of this. Um, my board writing, as you can see, is nothing short of apocalyptic. <laughs> I can't believe we did it in one take. That's what pressure does to you, ladies and gents. <laughs> <laughs>